In this video, we're going to demonstrate some more features of the robot simulator in Robot Basic. And in this case, we're going to hang a beacon from the ceiling in the robot's environment and have the robot home in on this beacon. And we simulate the beacon using a, a red circle. Let's have a look at this. Here's the robot and here's the beacon. And we would like the robot to turn either clockwise or counterclockwise towards the beacon and then run the distance towards the beacon. So how are we going to do this? Well, first of all, let's tell the simulator that the color of the beacon is not an obstacle. So when it runs over it, it doesn't report an error since it's not an obstacle and it doesn't collide with it. Now, secondly, we're going to develop an algorithm to turn towards the beacon. And while we're not seeing, while the robot cannot see the beacon, so while it cannot see the beacon, the robot's going to turn one degree at a time clockwise. And there is a function aptly called rbeacon, which, given a beacon of a particular color, would report the distance to that beacon. In real electronics, you could simulate, you could uh, create this with RF uh, radio frequency beacons, uh, pulsating beacons. Uh, beacons that report a certain code, either using light or infrared or uh, RF frequency, and at the same time, can also you can measure the distance to them. So this function in Robot Basic reports the distance to the beacon that, in this case, is red color, and if it is directly in front of the robot, if it's not, it will give zero. So if it is directly in front of the robot, it will give a, a number other than zero which would be the distance to the beacon. And in, in this case, if so, if it's a zero, this, this condition will be true, since zero is considered to be false, and it will continue turning. The moment this number is other than zero, the condition here, so that would be true, so not true will be false, and you will end up getting out of the loop. So let's try that. And there it is. It has turned towards the beacon. Now, the moment we get out of that loop, we know, getting out of that loop, that we are actually facing the beacon. And we can now use the function as a distance measure to the beacon. So this function now, the same function, will be, since we have ensured we're facing the beacon, will be the distance to the beacon. And we can forward that distance. So let's do that. And there we are. It's turn towards it and forward it the distance. Unfortunately, this is not realistic. No real robot would be able to forward a distance exactly given that distance due to wheel slippage either on the ground or due to gears. And if the wheels slip differentially, it will not even continue to be facing the beacon since it will turn if the wheels slip differentially. We can simulate wheel slippage in Robot Basic using this command. And given a number other than zero, if it's a zero, it will continue to be an ideal robot. But if this number is something other than zero, and the bigger the number, the worse it is. Let's make it 70. That's a really bad robot. will slip quite a bit. And let's see what happens now. And look at this. It seems to be facing the beacon. Let's run it again. And right now, you can see it has not reached the distance due to slippage, but also it's not facing the beacon either. So it has turned and didn't quite make the distance. Can we do something about this? Yes, we can. And I'll explain this in a, in a minute. So what we want to do is the same action as we've had before, but inside a loop. And so we will keep repeating this action. We'll keep repeating, turning towards the robot, uh, towards the beacon, 
and then forwarding the distance. If it doesn't make it, the whole action will be repeated. So until it reaches the beacon, this is the condition we're going to put in here, until it reaches the beacon, it will keep turning towards the beacon and then forwarding the distance. And if it doesn't make it, it will go back, make sure it's turning back towards the beacon again, and then forwarding the distance again. And if it doesn't make it, and so on. Now, we can tell that it has reached the beacon or not using the same function, our beacon. And let's make it a distance of 2. So as long as our beacon is greater than 2, it's going to keep repeating. So the moment it reaches the beacon, in other words, it's now a distance of less than 2 pixels, and we redeem that it has gone under the beacon in that situation. So let's try that. And... Uh, syntax error in line 9. Our uh, beacon. Oh, yes, I did not put the color in here. So let's do that. And But it didn't reach. And if you look at it closely, you'll see that it's not actually seeing the beacon as well. Now, why is that? Well, look at this condition here. We said as long as our beacon is less than or equal to, is greater than 2, it will keep repeating, but if it's less than 2, it will not repeat anymore and get out of this loop. It will be here. If, but we remember, this will report 0 if the beacon is not directly in front of the robot. And in that case, 0 is less than 2, so it will get out. So what we want to actually is change the condition. Our beacon, red, is not equal to 0 and it is less than 2. In that case, we know that it is facing the beacon, since it's not 0, and it's less than 2, and that would be the condition for getting out. Otherwise, if it is less than 2 because it's 0, it will keep repeating. And let's try that. And here we are. I'm going to make this slippage a little bit even worse, 90, and see what happens. And if you notice, it does some false turns, and that's because if it's facing this way, it's going to turn, we made it turn clockwise always, so it's going to turn clockwise until it faces the beacon again, so it doesn't know that it is slightly to the uh, left, so it just keeps turning to the clockwise. We can improve on this algorithm, but we won't do that for now. But you can see that it will. It keeps turning, turning, every time it, ma does, it makes a false a distance, it make sure eventually that it reaches the beacon. And you may question, what is the use of this? And I will demonstrate for you the use of this with a practical project in just a second. I'm going to demonstrate here a practical application for the algorithm we have just developed. Uh, this is a project uh, from chapter 15 of Robot Programmers Bonanza. And it simulates an office messenger robot, a very uh, nice application for a robot where the robot sits in an office environment and using a local area network program, it can be called to any office and sent to any office. So you load it up with uh, material files or so and send it to office two and call it to yourself. Now, you notice it knows how to navigate from one office to another by turning beacons on and off. And it's clever enough. We simulate here uh, an obstacle in its path using, by clicking the mouse in front of it, and it will stop and flash a beacon, tell it to warn the uh, person in front of it or whatever. And once the obstacle is out of the way, it will continue on its path. And it knows how to reach the offices by turning a network of beacons on and off. And uh, that algorithm is developed in Chapter 15 in the Robot Programmer's Bonanza. But to reach from where it is to a beacon is the same algorithm we have just developed together. And uh, I'm going to show you that it already has a 20% slippage, but if I increase that slippage to, say, 90%, even the worst designed robot would be able to still follow this network of beacons to the right path, even though it might be very slippy, as you notice here. 
And that's a very practical application for the algorithm we have just developed.